And now for something completely different. So I'm going to be going over how to make some safeties in Holly EFI. This works for both Boosted and NA applications. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is Terminator X. I'm going to build it for an NA car first, and then I'll show you the differences for a Boosted car. So we're going to open a global file. So right here we have a basic file with the basic ICS needed for a NALS on a Terminator X. We're going to add config for boost. We're going to click default. That's going to tell us that the boost ICF is incompatible with a one bar map sensor. We're going to tell it OK and we're going to just select custom two bar map sensor here. Click OK and we're going to go into sensor. Basically it's selected for us a two bar map sensor. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put 105. Select this top row here, and you can click R or fill row values. And then down here, we're going to go 4.5 to 0.5 volts. And again, R, fill row values. Now it's doing something weird here. We can just click out, click back in, and it'll be nice and smooth. This may not be the calibration curve for your map sensor. If you're using an OEM LS map sensor, you could find the calibrations for those. But now we've basically fooled it into this being a one bar map sensor. We're gonna go over here to our boost ICF, and this is what we're gonna be building out for today. We're gonna to go cut ignition, and we're gonna start building some IO to trigger this switch trigger. Go and go in here, add a config, IO, and default. And in here, we're gonna to go to outputs. I'm gonna show you a file that I've already built, and I'm gonna be linking this file in the description for download for free. You can bring it in and import it into your file. So let me pull that up now. In the IO here, we have our output set up. This particular one uses six. You can do it with a lot less. You can build it a lot simpler. This has a lot of functionality to it though. This is safety main. I call this limp. And you can see here, we have safeties one, safeties two, fuel pressure delta, AFR target versus actual, and oil pressure versus RPM. We're gonna look at safeties one first. In safeties one, if any single one of these are activated, then it will trigger this safeties limp. I wanna be able to limp this car home if any of these safeties trigger. I set this to activate above 2,500 RPM and it'll deactivate below 2,000. And the TPS also has to be above 80% and it will deactivate when TPS is below 10%. Now we go up here to linked outputs. Either one of those being active will trigger this safety main if both of these are met. None of these have to be pin mapped. So you leave them all unassigned outputs. So we're gonna look at fuel pressure delta. We're gonna use a fixed, we're gonna use a frequency of about 100. This doesn't really matter so much. It's going to be table units duty cycle and we're gonna use map versus fuel pressure. This zero line here is basically what we want our regulated one-to-one -one fuel pressure to be. You know, if we're at 45 PSI, we want to be about zero on, in the map. And there's a spreadsheet I have that calculates all this for you. If we're watt and we're at zero PSI in the intake manifold, but we only show 24 PSI, then we're under by negative 20 PSI. So this is, if we're under by five PSI, this will trigger. So that's our first one, that's fuel pressure delta. Here's AFR target versus actual. Same thing, it's just a PWM setup. This is our actual AFR on the bottom and our target AFR here. If you are targeting a 10-0, but have an actual 15, then we are lean five points. Up here, we are rich. So in our configuration of our output, of our safeties one, I want to activate this when AFR target versus actual is below one. So if we're off by one AFR, this is going to trigger. Now you can make this tighter or looser, however you want that to activate. Now we're gonna go look at our oil pressure versus RPM. You could set up just an oil pressure, say under 20 PSI, the car will cut ignition. But I like to set up a safety like this. So I make it a hundred and a zero. My hundred is basically this is good oil pressure. I'm okay with this oil pressure. If I'm racing and I have 48 PSI, I don't, I don't want the car to cut off the ignition. You can make this however you want, data log your car, look at the oil pressure, see where it is, and make this a reasonable estimate so it's not cutting your ignition all the time. We're gonna go back to our safeties one, and you can see here, 
oil pressure versus RPM is below 50. So basically that's not the 100 that's in the cells. And if it's below 50, it'll cut ignition. Then obviously we have simple stuff like battery is below 13 volts and coolant temp is above 220. So again, 13 volts, your car may not be that cranking, but you should be charging above 13 volts if RPM is above 2,500 RPMs. But basically that safety being below 13 volts is gonna help with fuel pumps possibly dying from lack of voltage, same thing with injectors or coils. So after that's all set up, any single one of these will trigger this output. When this triggers, this safety's main is gonna look at that and say, if we're above both of these, then it's gonna go and cut the ignition. If you have a big high horsepower turbo car, I would probably say revert to wastegate. If you don't want it to cut ignition, you can just turn this off. You can go in here to your output and you can just configure this as a light. If you have a boosted car, it's all the same. It's just, you don't have to configure your sensor and lie to it that it's a custom two bar. For NA car, one thing to look at is when you open the boost ICF, it's immediately going to change your axis here. So you need to rescale your tables back again to make sure they're all okay. So that's how you set up safeties for an NA or a boosted car and Holly EFI. Thanks for watching.